Mr. Afanga, thank you so much. He's the INEC Rec of Edo State. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Give us an understanding, first and foremost, of the significance of this appearance of the INEC chairman at the Chatham House today. Okay, thank you, Shaun. Um, this is the second INEC chairman to appear at Chatham House uh, to speak about the Nigerian elections. Uh, his immediate past successor did the same ahead of the 2015 uh, general election in Nigeria. So he was invited this time again by the Chatham House to uh, make a presentation. And remember that uh, we are talking about the elections of Nigeria. Nigeria is a very significant country. Um, um, in Africa, um, the, one of the largest democracies, in fact, outside of uh, the United States, where you have, um, if you are talking about uh, presidential democracy, Nigeria comes next in terms of the number of, number of people involved in the process, the number of registered voters and the population of the country. And as you also know that uh, some of the presidential candidates have been invited to Chatham House to talk about um, their aspiration. And so it was also right that um, we, are, we were not surprised that the chairman of INEC was invited to talk about the preparations because they've heard from the politicians what they want to do, how they go about, they want to go about with elections. It is also important uh, to hear from the organizers of the election, the election management body. And it was on that basis that um, the chairman of INEC was invited and he made a presentation today. So if you look at... Um what uh, i mean the scenario playing out one thing that worries a lot of people is the attack uh, the insistent attacks on annex facilities uh, the latest being the the one in the enugu south local government area office of annex in enugu state now the, i mean this was happening just about the time the annex chairman was planning to go to london um, and i guess he will be back in the country we thought that there was a meeting with senior members of INEC board and security agencies to say we are making adequate plans of forestalling this kind of scenario playing out. I mean, how worried or what is the plan of INEC alongside these security agencies to stop these activities? We're just less than 40 days to the election. Well, like you know, the duty of uh, securing the nation is that of the security agencies. It's just unfortunate that at this time, uh, the issues about security are such that affect uh, INEC, uh, the election management body. But of course, there is also the um, committee, the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security that discusses and plans strategies for addressing issues like this. And I'm sure that the security agencies um, know what to do, and we expect them to deliver on their mandate to secure the country so that the elections would go on. Our duty is to conduct the election, and we are planning ahead to conduct the election when the time comes. So we expect that uh, the security agencies would handle their own part of the election management. Um, so logistics was and one of the questions, uh, is part of the questions that was asked at uh, the Chatham House earlier today. And there has been um, history of failed logistics strategy by INEC. We saw this happen in 2015, in 2011. In fact, in 2019, a similar occurrence happened where logistics fell flat on its face. Um, from the, 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 the plans that the INEC chairman uh, reeled out today, uh, what confidence can Nigerians take home tonight uh, in respect of the history that we're seeing and looking into the next 40 days or so? Well, um, I'm, I'm sure the chairman actually responded, uh, responded to that question to say that um, the level of preparation we are at sat now is ahead of what we had in 2019. So we learn from the experiences of the previous elections where we had logistics uh, 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 setbacks and we've worked on it. Uh, where we are now, we are, we, are, we, are, we are ready with all the things that we need to be ready with now ahead of the elections. Uh, he talked about um, the uh, technology we are going to use, that they are all in place. And um, we, 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 are we, we, are, we are convinced that where we are now, we are ready as much as we ought to be ahead of the election. So uh, we don't have a problem. Um, we don't have serious concerns about uh, the logistics arrangement for the election. I'm sure that uh, we have learned enough from the past experiences and we are ready to uh, 
deliver on a, a, a successful election, especially as the logistics uh, are concerned. All right. Uh, many thanks. Uh, a lot of people were asking the question uh, of uh, the significance of that appearance today. Uh, maybe, uh, are there kind of support that Nigeria, uh, Nigeria or INEC is getting from anybody in respect of this election? Perhaps some of those conversations that you may be having on the sideline of that event at the Chatham House? Is there any? Well, just like all the previous elections, we have uh, support from different, uh, um, uh, Nigeria gets support from different agencies. Even in Nigeria, there are lots of agencies, international uh, 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 agencies that are supporting different aspects of the election, be it supporting INEC directly or even the uh, organizations in Nigeria that uh, participate in the election in terms of election observation. So th th there's quite a lot that the international community uh, does to support uh, the electoral process in Nigeria. Mr. Obo Efanga is the INEC rec in Edo State. Uh, Edo State and Lagos State is perhaps the two states that have released consistently details of the PVC collection. Please tell your other colleagues in other states to give Nigerians those details that your uh, Lagos and Edo uh, is bringing out at INEC. Thank you so much indeed, Obo, for joining us tonight.